Now with me is my guest, a longtime friend of mine, Ben Penserga, who works at the Daily Times as, what is your role now? I know they change it all the time there. Yeah, I mean, officially, my title is content strategist. Um, you know, with the Daily Times, I just serve as an editor there, uh, kind of like equivalent to city editor. So I directly supervise, you know, about maybe a half dozen reporters, and I help guide stories going to the Daily Times and to uh, some more weeklies as well. So that's the short version, anyway. And how long have you been at the Daily Times? I just passed my 15-year mark, if you can believe it. So uh, October 29th, 2002 is when I started. So it's been 15 years. So I've been in a bunch of roles as a reporter and editor, and this is my third building. <laughs> uh, we moved three times over the course of my career in Salisbury. Starting off, I know you have a vast collection of jerseys, hats, and memorabilia. How did you get into collecting memorabilia? Well, I guess I'll go from the start. I mean, so I guess the seeds actually go all the way back to maybe 1991. So I kind of got the bug a little bit later than a lot of people. You know, my parents weren't really sports people. My brother was or is. So I inherited some of his baseball cards, you know, when I was starting to come into my own when I was, gee, if it's 91, uh, I guess I've been about 13. So I started following sports that way. And then as I kind of got my brother's cards, I got Beckett Baseball Monthly, which was a baseball card pricing book. So besides baseball cards, they have articles in there. And one article was about this guy who collected baseball caps. So I said, oh, that's interesting. You know, I always like, I always say since I had no pathway to be any kind of official athlete, I always like to wear their authentic gear if, if possible. That's just my own thing. Hats were one of it. You know, it's like, it's just kind of cool to be able to same kind of hat, basically, that Cal Ripken or, you know, Mike Lucina or Bo Jackson at the time. So um, that got me started into collecting hats. And then in that same vein, that got me started collecting into jerseys maybe a couple of years later. Again, my brother had a authentic uh, Minnesota Twins Kirby Puckett jersey that was just really cool. And I got my own Christmas of 94, 95 I got Houston Astros and Jeff Bagwell jersey. So I, I got that from a place called uh, Manny's Baseball Land. Fast forward through college and, uh, you know, me graduating in the early 2000s. I really got into the jersey thing because I just, you know, I have a new job and I had a little disposable income. And I just, there's something about my family, I think, that just has a collector's bug. I mean, I really got into collecting jerseys and then and that evolved into autographs and memorabilia. Again, because the same thing, I'm just, I like things with an authenticity to it, whether it's game-worn jerseys or signs from Camden Yards or Memorial Stadium. Again, because I will never play in an NFL game or a Major League Baseball game, I'm trying to get as close to the pros as possible. So that's really just the evolution of where I've been with uh, memorabilia and then, you know, kind of graduating from hats to jerseys to autographs. Because at the time, my brother lived in Northern Virginia, and there's a really big autograph show there in Dallas Town Center near the airport and they always brought in good you know athletes and uh, so I was getting them autographs get my photos taken with them and I have some you know framed jerseys on my wall I think you can see from the video feed and they worn stuff Redskins jerseys I have a couple baseball ones too and a random like hockey jersey those are the coolest things I treasure the most now and like some of these jerseys that I've collected over 20 plus years of my hobby here I've, I've kind of reducing a little bit and, and kind of down sizing just because getting older I don't necessarily wear jerseys but just holding on to some of these things that I like to have autographed or something like that that's kind of the next step so that's kind of the long and short winded answer for that of those jerseys for the people who can't see it in the background you have an autograph Barry Sanders jersey an autograph yeah. Cal Ripken Orioles jersey an autograph is that Brooks or Frank Robinson oh Brooks Robinson jersey and an autograph a Sam Puff New York Giants jersey and then in the corner there is uh, Al Kaline and there's a couple that I still haven't. I've just not gotten around to framing yet. Actually, framing is just super expensive for like a Michaels or whatever. So in my closet still, I think I still have yet to be framed. Frank Robinson, and you were there when we got our autographs for Frank Robinson. <laughs> That's his own story. <laughs> Carlton Fisk and Nolan Ryan. And I think I also have a... Billy White Shoes Johnson jersey, who um, that was probably one guy, and that's just because somebody we both used to work with, Debbie Gates, that's her cousin. So, uh, you know, long time. Kick returner with the Houston uh, Oilers and the Atlanta Falcons, and uh, kind of author of one of the most famous touchdown celebrations of all time. So, of those jerseys, what is the most prized possession? 
That's really a hard one. The autograph shows, especially when I was really hot and heavy into them, which was like maybe 08, 09, 10. I got to get a lot of signatures from people and meet a lot of like athletes that, I, that I've admired. And you know, besides the jerseys in the background here, there's a bunch of signed helmets I have. Just people I, I admired for a long time. I, you know, as a kid, like Desmond Howard, you know, in Michigan, you know, I got his autograph a couple years ago. Barry Sanders, Ricky Williams, and Earl Campbell. But um, I don't know. I mean... <sighs> If I had to pick one, I would probably pick Frank Robinson just because he's one of my favorite Orioles. You know, one of my big regrets is that the grand scheme was to get all the Orioles Hall of Famers to get uh, autographs from all of them. But I still have a good chance. I missed my shot with, with Earl Weaver with him passing a couple of years ago. I kick myself even more so now because he was in Salisbury years ago for the minor league all-star game that uh, the No Marvel Shorebirds here in Salisbury hosted. And I didn't get him because I just didn't feel it was the right time. And then he passed away a couple of years ago. So that's one that I regret. If I had to boil it down to one, I guess I would say Frank Robinson. I mean, you were there. We were both there when, I, when we got autographs from Frank. And uh, Frank was in a weird mood, I guess. I can't tell if he was uh, being kind of the ornery old guy or if he was just trying to, you know, he, he was kind of Playing with us. giving us the business in a good way. But, you know, that probably has the most... That probably is the biggest memory for me. Uh, all the Redskins greats I got over the years, uh, Art Monk and Joe Green and all those guys. Uh, you know, Art Monk, again, being one of my favorite uh, Redskin players. Uh, Roger Staubach is really pretty cool. And, and uh, So I think those are the big ones. But if I had to boil it down to one, I guess I would say Frank Robinson. What would you say is the most unusual find at an autograph show? I think I have an idea on what it was, but I'm not sure. Jeez. I mean, we've been to a lot. Years ago, I got a sign from Memorial Stadium that kind of just told people to watch out for batted balls. That was kind of interesting. Um, they always have things that are up for sale, stadium seats, things like that. I remember there was a bunch of things that people wanted uh, autograph. There was a three-foot bobblehead of him that someone rolled out on a handcart. Uh, that was kind of interesting. And I don't know if, I think it was Jim Brown. Someone unscrewed a tailgate from a truck, had him sign that, which was just like sign with the Brown stuff. But I don't know. What are you thinking about? I was thinking about the Jim Poole jersey that you found in a bin and you ended up getting a pretty good discount on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. You know, it's funny with jerseys and, and game-worn stuff too, especially if it's not... I think that's a cool thing with the hobby is that if they're not superstars, but, you know, you have some personal connection with them, you can get them for not too much. I think that or say like those Leo Mazzoni jerseys or whatever game worn jerseys you get at uh, FanFest, you can get for a song usually 30, 40 percent off of what you would get from a regular retail authentic jersey. So those are always cool, right? I mean, no one's going to have a Jim Poole jersey. You know, Delano the Shields was an Oriole for only a couple years, but because he grew up in Seaford, Delaware, which is about the next town over for me, when I found his uh, game-worn jersey at uh, a fest years ago, I think 2008, again, he would not played with the Orioles probably for about six years. I was tickled. You know, kind of in the non-autograph category, I would probably say that's my favorite jersey, but there's a lot of things that you can just find. I mean, it's really what you're into and obviously what you're willing to pay. I mean, auctions, a lot of people will random things, right? It might Trout's mouth guard or something like that. It's like $32,000. I mean, if you like them that much, I mean, more power to you. I mean, that's not going to be me, but there's a lot of things that you can spend money on. And you know, there's, there's usually some of the things that are up for sale for that. So, Speaking of some of these auctions, I remember... I still have the Raphael Palmero autographed bat and it was a Ooh. solid auction and it kept going up and up yeah. and I used my credit card. I had never really used a credit card in the longest time. I had finally paid it off and it got up to about, I think, 50, 60, 70 dollars. And I was excited. Yeah. I know, especially the reputation Palmero has and everything that transpired. But to me, it was one of the biggest collector's items that I could ever have. And probably still is. I know I was able to win an autograph ball of Adam Jones for my wife uh, during a trivia yeah. contest at the uh, Orioles Fan Fest a few years back. But it was definitely, I think the Palmero bat is one of those things that ranks up there for me. You know, I mean, again, that's what memorabilia is, right? I mean, memorabilia, it's like it comes out of memories. And, you know, that's what it is for a lot of people. And that's why getting a getting a ball or getting gloves from a player that might not be like the A1 Superstar Hall of Famer, that's still burned in a lot of people's memories because it's, it's just cool. I mean, the memory is, you know, it makes you just kind of marvel at it. That's what happens, right? I mean, that's what these things are about. I mean, ultimately, some things you can put a price on and some things you can sell, but some things... Value really is just your own memories and how you value them. And again, if I gave that same Jim Pool jersey to somebody else, they don't know who that is. It's just a jersey. It has a personal connection to me and just something I like. And I hold it in higher esteem than like 
some other random Oriole fan who I might I could try to give it to. So I know you were talking about the collection of the Orioles Hall of Famers. I don't know uh, the, what are your biggest regrets is missing out on Earl Weaver, but are there any other collections that you put together that you've been seeking out or trying to get? So besides Earl, is I got both Robinsons, Jim Palmer, Cal, Eddie Murray. I mean, and I'm talking about main Oriole guys, right? I mean, not like Robbie Alomar, somebody who might have been in the Orioles for a little bit. I mean, that's another one of my favorite ones. I don't have all the Redskins Hall of Famers. I have a football in my living room that has most of them, but I'm still missing a couple. And But it's like Chris Hamburger and Larry Houston and guys like that, like smaller Redskins guys. I think I have a Bobby Mitchell, Charlie Taylor, and I, I think I have a Charlie Taylor autograph. I just don't have him centralized in the one football and stuff. So that's the other one I'd I like to get. You know, when I first started getting the jersey collection, I before I kind of really got the bug bug, you know, I was only going to buy jerseys that were Hall of Famers and stuff. And so there's still a couple I'd like to get on that side, just players that – I really do admire, and I just feel like historically are just awesome, you know. I mean, all the greats, right? Hank, Willie Mays, uh, Koufax as another one. Just legends. I can't get a Sam Usual autograph now. And basically all the Yankee greats whose jerseys I've had, they're not around anymore, you know. Your Mantles and your Maggios and Yogi Bears and, and all that. So, you know, some of the other ones that are just, that's why I felt like, you know, for me, that first year when I started collecting, the people, they were kind of towards the end of their careers, and they almost went in the Hall of Fame almost at the same time, but like, Carlton Fisk and Nolan Ryan, right? And uh, I'd love to get, I'd love to meet or get an autograph with like George Brett because he was another one of my favorite growing up early. Those guys, Mike Mussina, you know, another guy too, like Ben McDonald. I mean, Ben McDonald to a lot of people, but he was my favorite player um, those first couple of years when I started following the Orioles. So, I mean, I would love to get an autograph with him and some of those guys. Um, do I have a Mike Denver autograph? I don't think I do, but like he, but he'd be another one or, you know, just those guys. Again, it just comes down to your own sentimental value and I value him a little bit more. Of your Nolan Ryan jersey, which team, and if it's the Astros, is it the Rainbow Guts? No, I do have the Rainbow one, but I have kept that autograph free so I could wear it. So the one I have is the, you know, growing up for me, you know, towards the end is the, the Rangers one. So the Red and Blue Rangers one, same kind of one he wore when he moved down with Robin Ventura and <laughs> finished out the seven no-hitters and all that. That's the one I have. That's the one he's autographed. And I think you can still do it. You know, basically to his foundation and um, in return, I got an autograph for it. So a lot of people have issues sometimes. They don't want to pay for autographs. And I can understand that, too. And some of these guys really ask for a lot of money. But at least with the Nolan Ryan one, I could say, okay, well, I donate to the foundation and stuff. If I wind my scope a little bit, just like favorite players of mine, Ken Griffey Jr., Randy Johnson, Paul Molitor, I think would be another one. But yeah, Mucina, those guys, just people that... Just really enjoyed watching them play. And like growing up, especially, I just had a big affinity for Todd Helton, I guess. You know, football-wise, too. I mean, I already got Barry Sanders, but Emmett Smith, he'd be another one. But I don't know. I mean, that's what the fun of collecting sometimes is that it just never ends. It's good and bad. There's always something you're chasing after. And then when you do get it, then there's always something else that takes its place, which is good. I mean, you always have something to look forward to and chase, but it's also bad because it never ends uh, in that same fashion. What does your collection of NBA jerseys look like, if any? That's probably the most Spartan one, again, because it's just the nature of the uniform design, right? Because it's tank tops. I just don't have as many because I just don't feel like, one, I don't have the guns to like, I mean, you really have to either be famous or just like super jacked just to wear a straight up basketball jersey with no shirt under. But there's a couple, I mean, but there's some I do have that I just, because there's people I admire. You know, the greats, right? Jordan, there's this cover of one I'll never sell, probably. You've probably seen this cover, all. It's the slam cover where it's Allen Iverson, and he's kind of got, like, his hair blown out, and he's wearing an old-school Mitchell and Ness throwback jersey that just says top, it's blue and red. I have that jersey. That's one of my favorites, just because I, I love Allen Iverson. That's a pretty short one, though. Let's see here. Bill Russell I have, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller, Grant Hill, Penny Hardaway, who else? There's some other ones. I have a Charles Barkley All-Star jersey. Another Larry Bird jersey, Dr. J. Just the classic ones. I don't have any Jerry West and John Stockton. Just classic players, really. But I just didn't really get into them as much because I just they're harder to wear. But they're definitely small. I would say from most to least baseball jerseys. Then probably football because the college, too, if you include that. And then hockey and then basketball is probably the smallest ones. Just basketball, soccer, I guess. I know you also have a collection of minor league baseball hats, and that keeps growing as well. How many do you yeah. have in total, and yeah, you know, been your favorite? 
And there are really two kinds of people, right? I think there's collectors and there's people who don't collect. And what you collect actually kind of informs who you are as a person. And I know, I think I get this from both my parents before because they just have like big collections of stuff and they just do it. But yeah, the minor league baseball thing is cool because there's just so many of them. Again, you know, I go back from that Beckett story that I mentioned before. Once you kind of complete the MLB circuit and because there's only so many of them, I mean, there's only 30 teams. They have like alternate hats. I mean, it's not a lot, especially if you're up on it, right? You're only adding a couple hats every year, but there's so many minor league teams and there's so many different hats they have. The chase is always there. I'm, as I grow older, I think I'm reducing my more just like, I'm really going into this like food, minor league food hat subset because a lot of teams are having food themed caps. For example, let's see here. There's a couple bacon hats from a couple teams. High on my hit list, there's a couple with cheesesteaks, there's a pizza one, and there's one with a really cool one with uh, whoopie pies. I mean, the OG one's probably uh, gummy biscuits, which I have, but there's the biscuit one. There's just a bunch of others, man. There's Fresno Grizzlies that become the Fresno Tacos every couple years. Charlotte Pitmasters, the Brooklyn Cyclones had a pizza night, so there's a pizza one. There's uh, Rochester Red Wings. There's, I guess there's a dish called the Garbage Plate, and so they have one that homage to that. But, dude, there are just so many. I mean, that's the thing. If you kind of have unlimited funds, it's great. Awesome. Go for it. But as you start getting older and things are starting to focus as far as what you want to do financially and stuff, you got to narrow it down. That's probably what I'm going to do with the Marley Cats. Maybe just a couple of classic ones that I think. But it'll be mostly food related, I think, from here on out because they'll probably come out with six to eight every year. And let's keep it going, but not the kind of like super bankrupt me. So, on the subject of food, what's your favorite ballpark food? I guess delicacy. It doesn't have to be just a generic food. It could be a special meal or something that that a lot of ballparks may put out. I still like to keep it real simple, you know, a good ballpark hot dog and some nachos and a Coke. I mean, if I'm in Nationals Park, because it's just convenient, maybe it becomes a uh, half smoke or something like that from Men's Chili Bowl. But anywhere, I mean, you really can't go wrong with just a good old fashioned ballpark, Frank, and nachos. That's the default. I mean, I've never been to like San Diego or something like that. So maybe I would get a fish tacos, I guess. But you mentioned Nas Park. We've tried the DMV half smoke. It's the foot long half smoke with the ham, the Ooh. yeah, the crab cheese. And yeah, it's very yeah. high caloric. <laughs> but I think if you split it in half, you don't feel as bad. My only gripe about it is I feel like with the crab queso, it could be a little bit thicker. It feels very watery. But if it was thicker, I think it would be perfect. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the other thing that's really improved over time. You know, it's January 1st, a bunch of us did the annual Penguins whim. That's kind of our tradition. And one of our friends, you're talking about how Camden Yards actually has some vegan options and things like that. And who knew that to be able to do that? But I mean, where that's the variety of food nowadays is just so great that you can do whatever you want to. And if you're vegan, you can get food at the ballpark. I mean, I mean, if you just want to be old school like me, get that, you know, or get a hot dog with, with crab dip on it or mac and cheese or just do whatever. But so many options now. That's great. You won't get burned out on food choices at the ballpark now. Before we go into the subject of hot dogs, because that's going to be something we've always talked about. But I think outside the ballpark, sometimes the best food can be there, too, especially in Baltimore and Camden Yards. Just going to yeah. hit the vendors up before you go in. It's a little less pricier, and that's one of the good things about Oriole Park, where you can go in and bring in your food from the outside. And they're very lenient. Not so much at maybe a place like Nats Park. Maybe you can do it at, at Citizens Bank. Didn't really try it that time I went to Philadelphia, but... That's the one of the big things I like about being able to bring in food from the outside. Sometimes you're maybe not feeling some of the food there, but I think that's a good thing. It's a nice option. I think that's one of the things that you do have to tip your cap to Camden Yards because people have dietary restrictions now and allergies and weird food preferences. And just to allow that and not hold people hostage as far as their food choices, um, you know, it's always a good thing. So um, they should be commended for that. Back to the question at hand. I know we talked about hot dogs I'm pretty lean on hot dogs, but the biggest thing for me, it has to be beef. I don't play with chicken hot dogs. I don't like pork hot dogs. If I want something made of chicken or pork, I'll get something made of chicken or pork. And we've yeah. always had the discussion about what should go on a hot dog. And every time we bring up the subject of ketchup, that's yeah. the first thing that uh, that you sort of go against in that aspect. Yeah, I'm a real traditionist in that way. And I think ketchup is fine. And I, I mean, I was like this, too. When you're a kid... Uh, is acceptable on a hot dog. But I think as you get older, you need to graduate to mustard. And um, so I don't usually get ketchup on a hot dog. It's either plain or I'll get mustard on it. But I just keep it real simple with the hot dogs, man. I mean, you know, 
you don't need a lot. It's uh, it's pretty good, you know. I mean, if you're not counting us, you know, and that's for hot dogs. I mean, like um, kind of the sausages that pose as hot dogs, you know, like um, you know, in Baltimore, uh, like Polak Johnny's or whatever, uh, you know, that has that snap. I might make an exception for that, or maybe I'll put something else. But just good old fashioned, you know, ballpark Frank or you know, um, whatever you serve, just mustard. Just keep it simple. Excluding Baltimore, what would you say has the best in stadium uh, hot dog? Um, I don't know. Again, you know, I am kind of, if you want to classify them, I mean, I'm partial to Ben's Chili Bowl in D.C. just because I love Ben's Chili Bowl. And uh, the half smoke with some chili on it, just really tasty. You know? I forget the game. I'd just rather just, you know, sit and eat the hot dog, which is fine. And it's a little bit more convenient than going out to Ben's Chili Bowl, like the original one, so... And one of the interesting thing I know, hovering from from hamburgers to, I mean, the hot dogs, <laughs> hovering from hot dogs to another subject, French fries. I know there's a discussion about that. Some people will do uh, ketchup and mayo and things like that. What are your thoughts on uh, what goes great with French fries? I'm more liberal in that set, in that aspect. Um, it doesn't matter. I like eating it with ketchup. I don't eat it with mayo that much, but I don't mind it. Um, Honey mustard and barbecue sauce. Um, Actually, you know, say like I'm going to Arby's or um, Chick-fil-A or something like that. I don't usually eat it with ketchup. I'll just, um, if I have the option, I'll dip it in barbecue sauce or honey mustard. It tastes good to me. So um, I'm I'm definitely more freewheeling with the condiments um, with uh, for fries. What are your thoughts on barbecue at ballparks? It's good. I mean, you know, nothing smells better than walking past uh, Boogs, uh, Camden Yards, just that smell of barbecue. It's great. I mean, I can't, I can't hate on it. You know, it's good. I think Bulls Barbecue at uh, Citizens Bank Park, that was probably yeah. some of the best barbecue I had. They had pulled yeah. pork or pulled chicken sliders. They had half smoke. They had our kielbasa. So many different things and different combinations. I definitely like that. Actually, I think that their sausages and things actually outrank the Phillies hot dogs. I'm not a fan of Hatfield hot dogs. I'm going to put it out there. If Hatfield wants to say something, you can probably find me somewhere on the Internet. But I tried it. Sometimes nothing can can save a bad hot dog, a bad tasting hot dog. The presentation was great. It had all the condiments on there and it killed it. And it killed it once I took a bite. It was it was so disappointing, uh, but that's why I'll take an SK all beef any day. I'll take Hebrew yeah, SK, National. SK really is good. Yeah, SK Hebrew National. Oh, uh, Nathan's. We actually went up to Coney Island uh, last summer and actually had it at the Nathan stand, and those were some of the best hot dogs that you can imagine. I grew up eating like ballpark frank, so I'm used to and like you know in the house and stuff. So thicker, you know, right? But the, so the Nathan's one, it took me a while to get my head around because they're a little bit thinner. Um, they got different casing, but good hot dogs. Especially if you get those quarter pound ones maybe you get at uh, like at Sam's Club. I feel like that that makes it so much different. Yeah. So like I said, beef only. I can't do anything else but, other than that. Yeah, I think one I of the mean, worst mistakes of my life is I tried to eat a some sort of vegetarian hot dog at Walmart. I don't even think I finished the bite, and I just put the rest of the pack in the trash. It was just terrible. Like, eh, that was one of the worst decisions of my life. There's nothing wrong, so. I guess, going out there and trying it a little. I mean, at least you can say you tried it and didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, I've been getting um, these, um, I guess, they're more like sausages than hot dogs lately. I've been kind of on a run um, to get... Uh, you know, kind of the beef and brat or whatever, the cheese one. It's as uh, thick as a bratwurst, so, um, you know, but, yeah, I just bought some yesterday, actually, so. Yeah, I've tried some chicken and artichoke-type sausages. Not too bad, I mean. Oh, it, good. Like you like the, um, the ones, uh, I got them in Sam's Club. Um, it's like sausage, but it's like chicken sausage and, like, um, spinach and, like, Asiago cheese or something like that. Those are pretty good. They're a little spicy, too. They're a little spicy, too. As a sports fan, what would you say has been both your favorite sporting event and what is your most memorable one? Because they can always differ. Um, All right. Well, uh, I guess I don't know. Um, One might be both, but I'll I'll give you two anyway. But I think the top one that maybe you could as both favorite and memorable would probably be those Oriole playoff games I went to in 2014. You know, this is after they were terrible for a long time um, in it was the third year that uh, Buck Showalter, well, third or fourth year, um, and um, where he had been the manager, and they won. You know, they they'd won the AL East, and uh, you know, I got playoff tickets to them. And um, those first playoff games and those first playoff wins, just being around it, was winning, and you're just like, wow, you know, this is 
it's so foreign to me, you know, just kind of being in a stadium where just everyone was pulling for the Orioles and, uh, you know, it was a very high stakes game. Those are probably, I, I think in my more recent memory, those are, those are the two. Um, I, I think it's, looking back, it's kind of nice to be with history. Um, you know, I was at a couple, I've been at a few games where some historical things have happened. Not so much like home run record breaking, but uh, I was at the Nationals game where uh, Bryce Harper got uh, choked out um, by uh, a... <laughs> Jonathan Papelbon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jonathan Papelbon. Um, I was at that game. And uh, also kind of in the – I was there, but it's not like the best thing to brag about. Um, I was at the Wizards game when uh, Michael Jordan had the worst shooting night of his career. I forgot what it was, but it was like four for 20, five for 21 or something like that. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's not uh, so-and-so's 3,000th hit or, um, you know, a no-hitter, but, um, you know, there, there are definitely some – Conversation pieces for sure, uh, as far as memo. But I mean, just like overall favorite, I think that's one. Um, maybe those first few Oriole games, um, which I'd never been to. Uh, you know, my brother and I went back, um, you know, 92, 93, again, when I was just really starting to get into sports and the Orioles. And the Orioles were good because, you know, Cam Yard. Um, you know, those are some really memorable ones, I think. I think that and um, when the. Blue Hands, Delaware, University of Delaware Blue Hands, which I'm a graduate of, um, when they made the NCAA tournament back in the late 90s, you know, they were playing in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and uh, a friend of mine uh, went to the raffle, and we got, we were able to get tickets, so we hopped on the bus at like two in the morning to draw line up, and we saw uh, UD play uh, Tennessee. I mean, unfortunately, they lost, but... Um, you know that was still pretty cool. So at least I could say it was at a um, you know a, a March Madness game. So that was that was pretty neat. So those are those are probably some of my favorite ones. I'm sure I'm missing some. Um, I've never been to a hockey game. I've only been to maybe I think two NFL games. Um, those those are probably some of my favorite ones. Now being a UD graduate and looking at the football helmet, how different are they from a Michigan helmet? They're not different at all, really. It's just a shade of color. Um, the Delaware one is a little bit more of a royal blue, I guess. And, you know, that there's no mystery to it. Um, you know, one of the Delaware, um, the coaching lineage from Michigan directly from Delaware and some of the some of the assistant coaches from Michigan went to Delaware and uh, they brought that helmet along. So aside from just the color being different, um, slightly different, it's not. It's the same. It's they are an homage to Michigan and um, they don't make any they don't make any bones about it. So um, it's pretty obvious. So do you think uh Desmond Howard would be able to tell the difference between a Michigan and a Delaware helmet. Oh, yeah. I think anybody would. I mean, so this is my Michigan helmet. Uh, it's a little dusty, unfortunately, um, you know, with my Desmond signature. And, you know, it's a little bit, it's just darker. I think it's more navy or more like royal. So what are your thoughts on customized jerseys? Um, it's not something I would do in particular. I don't know. It's not my jam. What I don't like is like the real like gimmicky thing or, you know, someone putting like 69 on there, something really corny or cheesy. I, I really have a problem with that. I think that's just lame. You're a grown up and you have enough money and that, that, that's what you're going to waste it on. Um, but I mean, people who are, you know, come correct with it and stuff, you, if you put your own name on it. If it's like Mr. and Mrs. or I've seen that, you know, where you're getting two jerseys that are kind of a couple and, it's like, you know, that's fine. I mean, you can – it's not something I would do personally again, uh, but um, I don't find any fault in it. Again, I just have people – you're trying to be corny with it or, or do some dumb stuff. Um, that's what I'm just not – I'm not feeling it. Ugliest jersey design ever. Uh, I know it's weird, right? Because some of them, some of them that people find like ugly, I, I kind of like. They're kind of kitschy, right? You mentioned the Nolan Ryan uh, Tequila Sunrise, you know, rainbow jerseys. Some people hate them, but a lot of people like them. You know, um, even like the all orange Orioles look. Uh, Boot Pal looks like a pumpkin jersey. I, I like <laughs> those. Um, but uh, what I don't like is I don't like the mono color stuff. The Saints, I don't like that all black pants like leotard look. I just think that looks dumb. I think you need a stripe or something down there for contrast. Just as far as like straight ugly jersey, um, that's hard, man. Because, you know, some things that I, you know, uh, my taste have changed growing up. The Raptors, right? When the Raptors um, came up, they had the dinosaurs on there. You know, Marcus Camby and David Salmar. Like these things are kind of ugly, right? But now, you know, that's 
they their time has passed and they break them up as throwbacks. I like them now. Maybe it's just a nostalgia thing. Same thing with some of these other jerseys. I mean, it, it's hard to tell. I just I just have beef with um, monocolor stuff, except for the Orioles things. But uh, oh, you know what? I'll tell you. Um, I don't like the Browns look right now. I think it's too busy. It looks like someone who makes like fake jerseys was able to design the Browns jersey. So not a big fan of that. What are the things that are ugly? Um, sometimes I don't like things that are, um, say, if like, you know, we're talking about Michigan. Say if Michigan busted out like an all yellow look or um, I am so I'm thankful that the Redskins put their foot down and uh, they did not allow um, they didn't get pushed around by NFL to uh, the color rush series to wear all mustard yellow or whatever the hell. That's just ugly, man. It's worse in football, I think. I, I feel the Redskins could be able to pull off mustard yellow jersey with burgundy pants. I feel like they could yeah. pull that off, but not all. I like colors. contrast. I like contrast. I don't like um, head to toe. So, you know, that's why, um, you know, with the Orioles, when they when they wear the Saturday orange jerseys in the white panel caps, that's a good look, man. It's, it's, it's pretty. I like it. Um, so, but ugliest, yeah, I don't know. Just any, any team that has... That's just like all black. I mean, I don't know. It's just same as like black shirt and black pants and black shoes. I, it's just you, know, you got to have some contrast. You're like you break it up. So, man, I am not a fan of a lot of the Oregon football colors because, yeah, no, I, now, those like are them. too busy there, for me. Yeah, you know, it's funny because, um, you, you know, I think like people our age, um, you know, we're just traditionalists or whatever. But like people like the kids seem to like the wild ass um, jerseys and look like that. They just like weird, freaky things. They don't like the. Now, I can't say I'm not anti. I mean, like I said, I, I'm, they make me think of uh, – you've seen WKRP in Cincinnati, right? Yeah. I think of Herb Tarlick. Yeah. I think of all the loud colors that he wears, and it makes me think of Oregon football. But I know I say yeah. that, but I've always been a fan of the uh, Philadelphia 76ers Captain America uniforms. Yeah. I know everybody yeah. hates them, but I love them. Just because, again, um, when I was a kid, they were kind of ugly, and when they switched over, it's like, yeah, but, like, you know – now there's a nostalgia part to it, right? And I just think about those teams, Charles Barkley and uh, Jeff Hornacek and, you know, those guys who came over and who were traded and stuff. And uh, no, it's more, it's a sentimental thing. You know, if they're ugly, I'm willing to look past it because I just, it brings back some uh, childhood memories and things. So the funny thing I like, uh, especially the seventies, you had to notice a, an influx of powder blue uniforms, like the Braves yeah. and the, of course, the Brewers, the Cardinals, all those powder blue ones. Yeah, the um, I think and the simple reason for that is because uh, with the rise and prominence of color TV, so they want they wanted the teams to be more colorful, right? Because um, you go back to the flannel days, uh, you basically wore white or cream, uh, and then uh, on the road you wore gray. But with the advent of TV, I mean, people were really kind of let it loose. So that's why, you, yeah, you had the powder blues, you had um, teams wear red, you know, like the Reds had an alternate jersey uh, that was red. Um, you know, obviously the, the all Orioles, um, all orange look, and the Giants too. Just because you could see that on TV, you could see it in the color. You'd, you know, one of the few jerseys that I never put my hands on that I would still love to is, um, you know, uh, back in the early, like late late thirties, early forties, um, like a couple teams like the Dodgers and the Braves experimented with satin jerseys because they felt like maybe they would look a little bit better at night under the lights. So. Um, you know, Brooklyn came out, and they had an approximation a couple of years ago with some throwbacks with the L.A. Dodgers, but um, all satin. So, you know, the idea, again, is the lights kind of reflect on it and, and um, makes them shine a little bit more. So that would be one I would like to get my hands on still after all these years. It's pretty rare, but um, I almost never see it like on eBay. And if it is, it's like, um, you know, three or four sizes above um, what I could ever possibly pull off wearing. But, um, you know, that's that's one, so. The L.A. Rams colors, do you prefer the white color, the blue and white, or the blue and gold? they got to make up their mind, right? I don't like this mis- – the helmet, the current helmet and the current look just look weird. So you either throw it all the way back, um, you know, and bring it back to Jim Everett and Eric Dickerson and Flip Anderson and those Henry Ellard, or you just go all white like um, – um, Merlin Olsen you know. and – Yeah, yeah, like um, – like uh, Deacon Jones and, uh, you know, your boy uh, Fred Dreyer, shout out to Hunter, um, you know, things like that. Um, you know, Merlin Olsen, yeah. I mean, you, but they're kind of, they kind of have both feet and both errors and neither one of them looks right together. So that would be my advice. Yeah, and I think it was a really weird combination they did with uh, the St. Louis colors with some of the softer Los Angeles, like 94, 95 colors, and it was yeah. weird too. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say throw it back to... 
the current colors, you know, the um, gray show on turf colors and the white helmet, it's not working for you. So you should just go all the way back, man. I mean, the L.A. Rams, I mean, there were some good teams there. And, uh, you know, since they're good now, you might as well just go ahead and touch into that. And obviously, Eric Dickerson is a big influence um, in your team and he's a big presence there. So, um, you know, why not pay homage to him and Aaron and um, Henry Ellard and Jim Everett and those guys? Um, because, um, you know, they, they never won a Super Bowl, but they were fun to watch and they're a good team. So, what would you say has been your most favorite team redesign logo and uniforms as of late? Um, geez, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I have a very soft spot for things that are um, retro. I mean, obviously, when the Orioles went back to Baltimore, and even though I love the um, correct bird, whatever, God, I can never say that word. Ornithologically correct yeah. bird. Yeah, I mean, I was so happy. I I love the Orioles, um, you know, black crown, orange cartoon bird, orange uh, bill, you know, the one they used to wear in the... Um, in the 60s and stuff like that. I love that hat. I'd rather have that than the white panel one. So that was a favorite one of mine. I, I, I You know, I like that. I like that look. Um, I like the Jets. I mean, I guess I like the Jets going back to their uh, their roots back in the 60s, uh, you know, when the Joe Namath. That's a good look for them. The white helmeted Bills is cool. Um, uh, what else? Just I'm trying to think of my catalog here. Um, I've other some other good uh, classics that they've gone back to. I know it's a while, but what about the New York Giants switching from the, the 80s one back to sort of the 50s, 60s, 70s I like that one? Too. I like that, too. The blue, I mean, that's my favorite Giants thing, I think, is like blue jersey, gray pants, uh, the NY helmet. That's a good one. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, those are good ones. I, I you know, I think classics are classics for a reason. Um, and sometimes sometimes you got to do it to make a clash, you know, very arsenically it's time to uh, change it up so people can buy more merchandise. Um, but I don't know. There's some new classics out there. I think um, kind of getting back to your point now, like people kind of crap on the Arizona Diamondbacks one, but I feel like another 20 years from now, we're going to be like, oh, man, I love those uniforms. So we should bring them back, you know, the dot matrix and the hats. Uh, you know, that's one. Um, oh, uh, I would also say, going back to your other question, um, jerseys that I think are ugly right now, currently, I would say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers look right now, it's not for me. It's pretty It's pretty terrible. That looks like an expansion team from, like, NFL 2K06 or something like that, you know? It's just, like, not – it's not my – it's not a good look, I don't think, so. Would you like to see them maybe bring back a modified version of the Buccaneer Bruce Creamsicle ones? I've been talking the last guest I had on. We talked about the uh, the creamsicle ones. He didn't like it. He said that's the reason yeah. why they went they went winless. Well, I don't know. I guess nostalgia thing, right? I mean, I look look at the Redskins. Like you know, the Redskins for me growing up, um, the, they had the one look that was always great, which was the um, white jersey, burgundy pants. That's probably that's what they rocked with for a long time when they won the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, 91 season, all that. Um, and then they went to the yellow pants and the white jersey and, and, the, and the maroon at home. And that was kind of cool. But um, I like their um, – I like when they when they have the throwbacks now, which is the real deep burgundy ones, um, you know, and the kind of burgundy helmet. I like that. I mean, I think if, the, I think if you do that for the Bucks, um, you know, uh, three times a year, twice a year, I think people would like it. It's cool. And so – it shouldn't matter, right? That unless it's like unless they really feel ridiculous, like um, the White Sox going back to the um, the collared shirts and the shorts. You know, maybe that's a little too much. But I mean, I think these guys, um, you know, these players now, I think they can make it work. And uh, you know, just it's flashy now. The orange is the orange is flashy. Uh, I, I was just thinking of a couple of things. First of all, I thought about the perfect combination of a Redskins uniform. I like the homecoming uh, burgundy, deep burgundy. Jersey. Yeah. If you could bring back, I feel like using the spear, the spear helmet. Yes. The yeah. spear helmet with the gold ones. I, I, I do that in Madden all the time, especially when I'm playing Dallas. I call them the cowboy killer ones. Yeah. Yeah. And it works out perfectly. And I feel like it's a it's a great blend. And it's something, especially now with all these regulations. Yep. That one. The one you like, right? So yeah. The 70th one. anniversary ones uh, with, oh, with, the, with that helmet. With that helmet, uh, the Sonny yeah. Jurgensen era spear helmet, not the Radio Shack one, which I do love the Radio Shack helmet, but uh, that's a whole different uh, other color combination. But so I feel you know, like I mean, this is this is when they, in '94. This is basically what they wore, which is what they wear now. Yeah, um, you know, they're kind of like burgundy and all that stuff. So. Yeah, that 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 mid '90s homecoming one they wear now with that spear tip helmet and yeah. whatever pants. It, it it doesn't matter. But those what I, those are what I call when I put that combo together in Madden, the Cowboy Killers. I only play them, and I only wear them against Dallas. 
It's deep in my collection too, um, but uh, you know, one of the game worn jerseys that I have, it's actually the entire uniform except for the shoes, is uh, from Sean Springs from the ones they wore a couple of years. It's kind of what that look is now, which is the white jersey, yellow pants look. But uh, that's like in my store. That's like in my closet. I just I don't want to bring it out. I don't know, man. I just like I like jerseys. I, I like the retro stylings. I, I do, you know. So when um, you, you know when the Orioles throw it back, or when some of these other things, Redskins or whoever you want, um, throw it back to an older time. I just I like that look. I just it's cool. It's cool to me. You know, uniform aesthetics. You know, they're a lot different from what they were, and a lot of times, obviously, they're more simple, but. It's good. It's a good contrast to kind of what today's logos, uniforms are, which are, you know, focus group tested and they kind of come up in a lab from a PR marketing firm or whatever. You know, these old school logos, they're from contests or someone, somebody just like, I like this and let's go forward. You know, it's not really any, it wasn't any kind of committee thing. It was just one person who said, okay, we're going to roll with this. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I was thinking about favorite and least favorite a logo redesigning rebranding i love the sacramento kings new logo i love the logo i hate the uniforms yeah 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 you're right, you're right. i feel like there should be a perfect blend between the kansas city 70 the 70s the early 80s early 90s uh, kansas city sacramento kings logo yeah. with that late 90s early 2000s color scheme i feel like that's a perfect blend uh that would fit you know the white script and maybe yeah. the purple and black jerseys. I can live with that. I mean, I know I'm not saying powder blue or royal blue Kings jerseys, but something like something like that, the mesh and both. But I hate the the sack and all the other stuff. I, I feel like uh, yeah. the Kings have always been bad with their redesigns and their uniforms. I think, I think the marketing and redesigns, they try too hard. They try to manufacture something, right? You know, just like let it happen. Let, um, you know, I mean, I like Brewer's logo, right? The M and the M and the B that make the baseball glove. I mean, that's like a timeless logo, right? And that's just that was just a contest winner. I mean, you can see it actually. You know, we, you talk about minor league stuff. You can see that design, that bad design influence a lot because um, you're when teams rebrand or they move. Um, you know, someone redesigns their uniforms, and a lot of times it is that kind of bad. We want it to appeal to the kids, you know, and uh, you know, like. Kids like spiders, so let's do something with spiders. And, you know, it's just like it's not um, – and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I, I disagree with that. I disagree with kind of like uh, just kind of test tube logos and uh, things that are like, you know, incub- you know and, um, come out through some sort of PR incubator. It's just not my thing. I, I feel like there's a hidden gem I, I, uh, people sleep on. Now, the Kansas City A's jerseys pre – Pre Charlie Finley, green and gold, the sort of had the red, white, and blue, sort of the stuff that they used to wear yeah. on their way out of Philadelphia. Those are some nice jerseys. Yeah, yeah, those are good. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like. Um, yeah, those are good ones. I mean, for me, because I I gravitate to some uniforms just colors in the color scheme, right? Um, I like blue. I like white. Like those, those, yeah, those can those early Kansas City A's uniforms, uh, Philly A's. Uh, you know, blue and white. Um, you know, they're just, it's, that's just what appeals to me, you know, um, basic colors and stuff like that. I mean, it's weird. Like some things I just respect the hell out of, like the Cardinals or the Phillies. I would lean more towards like, you know, I mean like, uh, the rivals, but I mean the, you know, the, the Yankees and the Red Sox, they have two of the most kind of simple uniform aesthetics of all time and the most kind of hats and uniforms. Same thing with Detroit. Um, you would put that in there. I guess the Cardinals would be in the mix too. Um, the Phillies' current look, really classic uniforms. Um, you know, White Sox and the Cubs, obviously. Um, you know, Pittsburgh. I mean, there's a bunch that I think are just we're kind of a very classic uh, uniform aesthetic right now, where you have these really simple uniforms that have kind of stood the test of time, and then you have something kind of wacky and out there, which I also appreciate. Like I said before, like the Diamondbacks, you know. It's a weird look, but uh, it works for them. That and something that's a little bit, I feel like, is a little bit more milk toast, and kind of in the non-throwback uh, category, like San Diego, which is just blue and white. I mean, they, you know, they throw in the Taco Bell stuff now, which I appreciate, but this is straight like blue and white. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a discount uniform, so. Yeah, the Padres are the most schizophrenic uh, baseball team when it comes to jerseys. They don't know what they're going with. They're, they don't know if they're going early 90s, mid-90s, 70s, uh, the military yeah. ones. And, I mean, I like the military ones, and I do sort of like them emphasizing back to the colors 
of the 70s, early 80s World Series team. But then they start going back to the early 90s, sort of brown and beige one before they changed that to a blue and a blue and orange yeah. color. The uh, those mid 90s Tony Gwynn ones, and it's it is weird. They just can't make up their mind. No, I mean like the you know they hosted the All Star Game one year, and the um, it was a one year it was a one year look that San Diego the interlocking S and D where the S was uh, you know where one one letter was white and one letter was yellow. They just kept that for the All Star Game, and then they went back to the old one. So um, you know it's just like make up your mind, man. Yeah, they're wearing like seven or eight uniforms differently. Uh, yeah. Going back to the Diamondbacks, well, my wife loves the Diamondbacks color. She she yeah. liked the yeah. she liked some of the uh, designs of, especially I think it was more the road uniforms than the home ones. Yeah, it's a nice for sure. But when you think about it, you know the colors kind of really do invoke the Southwest. You know, like the Reds, and you have, you also have like turquoise and teal mixed in there, and black, and you're like this doesn't really work, but it does. It kind of does actually. I see that again as one of the new classics. I really do, and uh, you know, one that will, uh, you know, we'll look about it with some sort of like weird fondness, like we do with the uh, rainbow Astro jerseys or um, you know, seventies uh, double knit, uh, you know, multi or mono color looks. So, and you mentioned double knit for the people who may not know what the term double knit means. Could you sort of give a little bit of a definition for it? Yeah, basically, you know, it's kind of okay. So. For a long time, uniforms were made from um, flannel, uh, like wool flannel, okay? So, and they were kind of baggy, and obviously they were hot. You really couldn't do so much with them, but, you know, that's what the guys wore. You know, that's what Babe Ruth wore, and Mickey Mantle, and, you know, Hank Greenberg, and Sandy Koufax, and all those guys, Duke Schneider, they just suffered through it. And then, so, in the early 70s, we kind of changed it to double knit, um, you know, which is kind of... um, polyester basically um so they last longer hold some more color and they just um you know they could breathe a little bit more do different things with them um so that's kind of the era we got you know that kind of ushered in the polyester era so that's why you could just tell like it's just very like aesthetic wise there's a big line of demarcation from those kind of like real old school uh gray flannels and then to like the late 60s early 70s when we kind of move into the Color TV era and you know, wild colors again, like we were talking about with um, with your powder blues and your reds and your browns and all that stuff. When like TV could actually, um, you know, kind of let those things uh, stand out. Your thoughts on Sunday throwback jerseys? You know, a lot of those teams in Major League Baseball are starting to do them. I know the White Sox are not going back to those uh, ugly collared ones, but they're going to the early, well, the mid to early '80s ALCS style yeah. uniforms. The Brewers. Beach blanket and- bingo, yeah. I mean, I like them. I wish the Orioles would throw it back. Uh, I wish the Orioles would have a Sunday throwback. Um, again, I would put the, um, the – there was only a one-year look, but if I could do it, I would put them back in the um, those vests that they had. So, you know, they had the early mid-60s early, mid look when they were on the rise, you know, um, put that in the Sunday thing. But I love it, man. In fact, speaking of the Pirates, um, I love that they brought the Bumblebee book uh, look back and complete with the – Star Drill Stars, and it's yellow, and it's black, and it's weird, and I love it, man. I just, um, a lot of times I watch uh, highlights of uh, Pirates games just because I love that uniform. It's just a cool look. I'm so glad they brought it back. Switching from the baseball ones, I feel like the Wizards, I saw they had those, all those new uh, regional jerseys that came out. Yeah. I still feel like yeah. oh, the district one looks nice, and I saw a lot of people talking about how they need to sort of emphasize, you know, just put the district instead of the District of Columbia because it, it it feels like it weighs it down. But yeah. I'm just still wondering if they can't do some type of modified version of a Bullets jersey. That's the one thing I'm asking. Yeah. They kind of do. I mean, I guess they they're they kind of have a nod to it with those stripes on top. But um, I just I don't you know, given the political climate, I don't know if Bullets is ever going to come back. I know that. Some people had a um, hard time when uh, a couple of years ago when the Astros threw it back to the Colt 45s and people had an issue with that. I mean, I just uh, – I think that's just home oversensitivity that's kind of run a buck. You got to be able to separate that, you know, and just uh, – that's just like political correct. Like you can't say Red River shootout. It has to be a Red River rivalry now. It's just lame. It's, yeah, it's lame. But. And especially in a city with the Washington Redskins, you can't use bullets one time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can understand why you changed in the first place. I mean, you know, DC in the '80s was a bad place. Um, it was, you know, in the early '90s. So I can understand why you would consider the change to the Wizards because. Uh, but I just think um, I don't know. Another reason I had heard is that they wanted to do that just so they can go for nostalgia. That way, you could sell more and throwbacks, and yeah. all using the Wizard stuff. And and apparently, uh, those the redesigns of the Wizards and Capitals when they went to those. We're not good, and they change back eventually to red, white, and blue anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can understand that. I mean, I can understand that aesthetic, and it's nice to have like a. It's cool when cities have um, uniforms like the pirates, you know, uh, like like in Pittsburgh, you know, with the pirates and the penguins and uh, and the sealers in the black and gold. But um, I don't know. I wish they could. I don't know if they can. I'm not a really big fan of those early Wizards jerseys anyway. I think they're kind of whacking like that blue, gold, black color scheme. Uh, maybe just because. Those teams weren't the best. Are they? They just kind of um, are they underachieved. Just kind of bring back some bad memories. But I don't know. That's why I love that last Bullets team. That last Bullets team made the playoffs, shook the Bulls yeah. a little. I mean, sure, the result didn't end well, but I just was not long ago watching yeah. that game. Yeah. That game three in Washington, their first home playoff game in five years, and yeah. that crowd was crazy yeah. and. And just seeing them in bullets, that was probably a fitting way for them to go out before they change the team colors and yeah. the name. Ben, I do appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this. Oh, yeah, man. No problem. I love talking about this stuff, man. So uh, whenever you want me on here, I'll um, I'll be glad to do it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I could talk all night about this stuff. And, um, you know, maybe uh, if I did some more research, I would be able to give you some more concrete answers about my favorites. But oh, anytime. Yeah, there's plenty of jerseys to talk about it. Wherever you go, you know, some teams are always going to redesign or change. Change colors, yes. or do something different, yep. and there's always something to talk about. 